This time I'm going to have to step up another level because it's all hands on deck. The vets are so busy this time of year, so I just hope that I can keep up with the pace. Scott will be based at the Market Hall Practice, which looks after local pets as well as animals at surrounding farms, and he's checking in with head vet David Stark. Morning, David. Good morning. How are you? Good to see yeah, you again. Great. So what have we got planned? Uh, lots of lots of carvings, lots of sheep, lots of cattle, hopefully lots of horses. Yeah, those lined up for, for the week, Scott. All right, well, I've got some overalls in the car, I promise. So oh, I'm, great. Good. Should I go and chuck them on? Yes. Awesome. Great one. Nice one, Dave. Good okay, to see Scott. you. Cheers. Scott's being put straight to work after a call about an emergency at a local dairy farm. A Jersey cattle owner has called to say that one of her girls is very sick. All we know is that this poor girl isn't eating and she does have a calf. Scott will be working under the guidance of vet Vicky. Right, time to get okay. suited up. Yep. She deals with big farm animals oh, yes. on a daily basis. What we need? But Scott hasn't done any major procedures on a cow since his university days. Oh my goodness, here we go. Waiting anxiously is dairy farmer Helen. She's worried about her much-loved cow, Athena, who's recently become a new mum. She just looks generally miserable um, and not happy with life. We never have problems with calvings the jerseys. So I'm a little bit nervous. Hi, I'm Scott, how are Hi, you? I'm Helen, how are Hi, you? Helen. And who's this gorgeous beast? This is Athena. Athena. Very beautiful. All right, so what are the issues that you've been having with your cow? Um, she's been calved just under a week, and we've noticed the last few days um, that she hasn't really been eating as much as I'd like her to. She just looked a little bit depressed. Right. First thing, uh, let's have a little listen to her heart. That's all clear, so uh, just listen to her stomach. Oh, do you want to have a listen? There's not a huge amount of noise going no, on in it's there. it's quite which, quiet. Yeah. That rumen's not moving. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's just not functioning no. at the moment. Yeah. All I can hear is complete silence, and that's a real concern. The four stomachs inside a cow should make a lot of noise, and when they don't, that's a worry. I believe that this cow might be suffering with a condition known as left displacement of the abomasum, or LDA. It's basically where one of the four stomachs is twisted and can commonly happen after a cow has had a calf. The way that LDA is diagnosed is by using percussion, so basically tapping on the side of the abdomen of the cow. You hear it? Oh, wow, yeah, there. there. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. That is a lot different to the surrounding area. It's very distinctive sound, isn't it? Yeah. We can hear a very tinny sound, which basically sounds like a, a bag, which is the abomasum, filled with gas. It's, so it sounds a little bit like a drum. So pretty much part of the stomach that's here needs to go over there. Yeah. And the only way to do that is by reaching in. Um, pulling it back. Pulling out. it out. Athena at the moment's uncomfortable and she isn't eating and she will lose weight quickly, so we need to intervene with this surgery. First, I just need to give it a little local in Wales, Scott and farm vet Vicky are about to begin critical surgery on new mum Athena. You're not going to like this, yeah. You're going to jump a bit. She's being given a numbing injection in her side, but she'll be awake throughout the procedure. Good girl. I know, I know. If a large animal is calm enough and quiet enough with just a light sedation and local anaesthetic at the site of the incision, it's far better for them and it's far safer as well. It's a nice happy jogs for you, sweetie. After carving, the much-loved Jersey cow has been left with a badly twisted stomach. One of our stomachs is full of gas and has moved to the wrong place. So uh, we need to get that back in the right place. But sometimes you can open them up and they've been twisted for a long time and the abdomen has started to react. So until you open them up, you don't really know what you're going to find. First, Scott and Vicky need to release the trapped gas before moving the stomach back into place. Good to go? Yep. The procedure will be performed through an incision made in Athena's side. 
So I'm always nervous when surgery is involved in any animal. We haven't had a huge amount of them done here either. So from an owner's point of view, it's, it's a little bit nervous to watch it happen, yeah. I can just feel across. I can feel a nice big stomach on the other side. Back in my uni days, we learned about farm animal stuff, but it's about 20 years ago, so I do need to refresh my skills with these fantastic farm animal vets. So, mm -hmm. if you're going to stab anything, stab yourself. Right. <laughs> so, you want to okay. take that? Yeah. So, guard it. I just want to keep that on there and guard it with my life. Yep. All right, Athena, you can trust me, sweetie. So, round, round the intestines. Oh, my goodness, that is actually quite hard to do. Yeah. Oh, without yeah. stabbing yourself. Yeah. So once we open up the cow, you're going in blind. It's just experience and knowing what's normal and navigating under and round quite important bits of anatomy. And then? Put just straight in. Straight in. As far as you can. Okay. And then it's going in now. There we are. So the gas that comes out, that's basically fermented grass. That's what they're eating at the moment. And it's sat there for a good couple of days, so it's quite rancid to kind of smell, really. <sighs> My heart is actually going doing that. <laughs> so that is, that's, that's frightening, is uh, performing a procedure like that, a massively sharp needle around this poor girl's organs. Protect the needle, bring it back out. Okay. Yeah. Okay, please don't move. Okay. <laughs> Good girl. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. An antibiotic spray completes Athena's treatment. Um, great. Good job. Athena is immediately looking so much brighter. She just looks like a different cow already. I was really happy with how Scott and Vicky worked together to get it done. So it went really well. You couldn't have gone any better. Before Scott leaves, he wants to see how Athena's six-day-old calf is coping without his mum. This is Athena's son, Achilles. Hello, mate. Oh, hello, beautiful. Whilst mummy was getting surgery, you didn't get your breakfast, did you? Hey, no, you didn't. Here we go, you gonna have some? There you go. There's the good stuff right there. Oh, yummy. Boy. It's been a really incredible day today to be able to work alongside Vicky and to help Athena and now to feed this adorable little youngster. It's been a great end to an absolutely perfect day and now I can see the benefits of being a farm vet. Pretty nice, really. Well, they seem to enjoy that and hopefully Athena will be able to do the job moving forward. Yeah, she's already looking a lot brighter, so hopefully he'll be back in with her tomorrow morning, hopefully, to just have a little bit of a, a sack, and then she can go out with the rest of the cows then. Yeah, unless you want to come home with me, eh? Eh? Yeah. So we separated the, the group here? Uh, yep, we've taken them away from the herd. South of Darwin, Chris and buffalo dairy farmer Jeff are trying to move Penny into a crush. Steady, steady girl, steady, easy baby. The 10-year-old new mum has deformed horns. They're growing into her skull, dangerously close to her brain. Whoa, whoa. The idea today is to sedate her, make her nice and relaxed, and then using a wire, cut through those horns and shorten them and really free up some space so she can get on with her life pain-free. No. No. Go on, girl. In we go. Come on, Pat. Come on, Pat. In we go. There we go. Good girl. There we go. We'll shut this gate. Penny is finally in the cooling yard, but the battle isn't over. Whoa, Penny. Whoa. At the moment, it's a bit of a dance between Jeff and Penny. Each time she moves in and sniffs him and gives him bad body language, he moves away. But the moment she comes down, he comes closer. Hopefully, with this patient approach, we'll get her in. What's her problem at the moment? She's just upset. No. Come on, off you go. Come on. That's me, darling. Up you go. Up you go. Bobby's there too. Come on. We're slowly getting a trust, aren't we? Very slowly. We've got her in. We'll shut this gate. Finally, Penny is into the race. But right now, she isn't exactly thrilled with the situation. She's looking a bit stressed. The problem with stress is that it really makes the behaviour of any animal unpredictable. And when you consider what we have to do to Penny today, it's obviously a very dangerous situation. This is the first chance I've really had to be up close and personal with, with Penny's horns and you can see 
they've already pressed in. And if we did nothing, it would kill her. There's no doubt about that. At a buffalo dairy farm outside Darwin, Chris is about to begin life-saving treatment on Penny. And I'll give her an injection into the muscle, which is just going to relax her. Yep. And from there, if we can actually get her out with her head tied up, yep. get a nice little halter, okay. we'll do the procedure. Concerned farmer Jeff is hoping for a good outcome. It's life-threatening to it. And, uh, you know, she's a, she's a top little girl. And straight away I know that I've actually managed to get a decent dose into it because that gruelling's begun. Easy, baby. Her eyes are starting to look a little bit droopy and she's starting to sway. They're telltale signs. She needs to come out now. That's all right, she's going, she's going, she's going. With Penny now relaxed enough, it's safe for Chris to begin the procedure. The very inside of the horn has a blood supply and nerves in there as well. So if we go through the wrong part, she could feel it. I don't want that, so I'm going to block out any sensation with a nerve block. OK, doesn't seem like much, but this is embryotomy wire. The whole idea with this is it provides a really fine cut through the horn, whilst also essentially blocking off the blood vessels as it goes. That's really effective. Just have to get it moving nice and quick. Now I may get a little bit of blood, but that'll be fine, we can manage that. I'm only going to cut off about half the horn. That may be enough to be a permanent fix. If it's not, it's still going to buy about 10 years of carefree life for her. I'm starting to get a bit of smoke there too. OK, not much blood loss. We've gone into a nice area there, just a little bit of bleeding, which is what you expect. And we haven't exposed that, that skull cavity, which is really the priority. Hopefully now, if it grows out, it'll take it away from the body rather than, than into it. Still want to go. The water's getting quite hot between the fingers. I'll bet it is. Almost on you. Look, no blood at all. No blood at all. Well done. Oh, look at you. Having this off her head really means that she doesn't have that, that ticking clock beside her brain that whole time. Now she can, she can graze, she can wander around, she can raise her babies, maybe even produce just a bit of milk for Jeff, but she doesn't have to have this worry sitting right there. Penny will spend the next few hours sleeping off her sedation. But for now, everyone, including her little calf, Mary, is happy. In so many other situations and on other properties, Penny may have just been put down with this problem. But because of the bond that Jeff and her have, she's got her a second chance. I'm sure you've had lots of thanks from people, but I'd like to think I've just gone to the top of saying thank you. <laughs> I think the most pleasing thing for me is the fact that Penny's happy and Jeff seems thrilled. Today I'm off to Wales for something completely different and I really need to get on the road. Scott's taking a break from his three practices and heading to the country for a working holiday. After making London his home for the past 18 years, the Australian vet is exploring another possible move. The idea first came up when a client of mine mentioned that they had a relative that runs a big rural practice in the beautiful green rolling hills of Wales. Now, I have always had a bit of a daydream that one day I'd pack up the family and head to a completely different environment, somewhere with clean air and wide open spaces, and become a country vet. So Scott's putting the dream to the test, working at a local practice in the historic town of St Clair's for the next few days. I'll be the first to admit that I'm going to be completely out of my comfort zone and I'm pretty nervous. It's been a very long time, pretty much since my university days, since I've seen the business end of a cow or a horse. So it'll be very interesting to see if I can convince the locals that this city slicker's got what it takes. Up to you. Yep. Hello there, ladies. How are you doing? Good, Good, how are you? Good. I was actually trying to work out how to say hello in Welsh. How do you say it? Hello. hello. Oh, so you just say it with a Welsh accent. Yeah, Keep it, keeping it simple. Yeah, well, <laughs> you definitely need to do that for me. Welcoming Scott to this country vet practice are Fionn and Ang Harrod. I am supposed to be seeing the boss. Whereabouts is he? Straight through there. 
Wish me luck. Good luck. Hi there, David. Hi, you must be Scott. Yes, I am. How are you doing? Oh, so pleased to meet you. And welcome. you. Yeah, welcome to beautiful Wales. Thank you very much. Um, Today, well, Scott honest. is reporting to one of the practice's head vets, yeah, we've got David a busy Stone. Day today. So we've got a busy day on farm, so I need to get you some proper gear. Not my usual kit, I'll be honest, but uh, look, I'm happy to get stuck in with the farm work. Right, let's get you kitted up and then we'll crack on. Sounds good. Good. Forget any notion of lazing around watching the grass grow in sleepy old Wales. We're into it straight away. First up, David has an interesting challenge for Scott at a local farm. Good girl. Up you go. This should be 51, David. This bee farm is run by four very independent Welsh women. There are three generations here. My grandmother and then my mother an aunt, and I. Everybody has an opinion, but as long as we get there in the end, that, that's the important bit. Hello there, ladies. I'm Virginia. Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Marga. An Olga, unsuspecting hello. Scott is Hi, about Stephanie. to find out Hi, what Stephanie. the Roberts Isabel. ladies Isabel. have in store. I'm feeling a little bit of intimidation with you for <laughs> already. Do you yeah. normally feel like that when you come here, David? Oh, I've got used to it over the years. <laughs> have you? They got used to the girls. I'm acclimatised. <laughs> right. So what have you got me here for today? We've got a pedigree bull, so uh, we need you now to have a look at him to make sure that he's fit for breeding. All right, well, shall we unleash the beast? Yes. Let's go. If he's used to smaller animals, seeing a bull is going to be uh, totally different. I'm very worried about seeing this bull. I'm sure he's an absolute giant. Bulls can be a bit aggressive, they can be dangerous, so I think we've got to be careful in this situation. Oh, great. <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> a bull. There he is. I was expecting something this high. Uh, you'll grow into a big bull eventually. <laughs> let's go down, let's go look at him, Scott. Hello, boys. Luckily, Scott's first patient is a young bull called Merlin, with his mate Colin keeping an eye on the visitor from the city. If you look carefully, you'll see he's got a tremendous hindquarters. He's really well built. And so that's why they feel he has potential as a bull. So what you're saying is that he's got a bigger bum than the other one. And from a beef cattle perspective, he's going to pass it on to any offspring that he has, which is also That's right, very yes, positive. And, and produce very good beef calves as well. But looks aren't everything when it comes to breeding. Dave and I commenced the examination of this bull from head to toe to make sure he's up to scratch and he's going to be a good dad to all of the Roberts family's new calves. He's got a lovely champion. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Yeah, he's good nice. boy. He's just very strong. He's, you know, he's a very strong animal. But otherwise, he's lovely and quiet. You can handle him quite nicely. We'll just check his teeth, see what his teeth look like in his mouth. Yeah. Good alignment of the teeth with the upper jaw. Would you like to have a, have a turn and, and examine him? Have a look at him? Yeah, sure. <laughs> this bull is maybe not as big as I expected, but it's certainly bigger than all the patients that I treat in Richmond. Good boy. Are they like dogs and cats? Do they respond to being talked to? Yes. Yes, yeah, definitely. yes they do. Definitely. Oh, there they you know, go. They know your voice. Oh, hello. You probably haven't heard my accent before around these parts, I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> hey. G'day, mate. How's it going? Hey. Hey, you're a handsome fellow. Nice, oh, incredible. Incredible to look at these beautiful brown eyes close up. Very nice. All right, let's check his height. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. My initial impression is that it's running faster than I thought it was going to be. But just same with dogs and cats, the younger they are, the faster the heartbeat. Yeah. His eyes seem good, his heart seems good. Everything else is looking very, very good. But at some point, I know I'm going to have to go to the business end. All right, Merlin, I promise to be gentle. If the bull hasn't got good testicles, then he won't be able to work as a breeding bull. Getting nice and close to him. Jeez. Okay, grab both testicles. <laughs> Get a nice firm grip there, Scott. <laughs> well, Scott's definitely got his hands full, but he's got great technique. Feeling good? <laughs> They're very firm. <laughs> They're very impressive. I can't feel myself blushing. It's a nightmare. Well, in the bull, um, he likes his scratches and uh, he likes to be with people. Obviously, they're bonding. 
good. Just check them for symmetry and size. Check for any lumps and bumps. And they're of a good size for his age. Everything feels great. They do feel great. Ladies, I think that your bull, hopefully, he's got the equipment suitable. He's ready to go. I think the Roberts family are going to be very happy to know that their bull's up to the job. I'm just not quite sure that I am. OK, there we go. There you go. Job done, but there's still plenty more to come. It's day two of Scott's working holiday in the Welsh farming community of St Clair's, where he's exploring the idea of one day becoming a country vet. Right. Ready to crack on? Yeah, absolutely. Today, he's up early helping out head farm vet right, David so at a dairy local dairy farm. farm. David obviously is the lead vet here. He's the man that knows what he's doing, and I'm the humble pupil. Yeah, I've got one for you as well, Scott. We'll get okay. the scanner out for you now on the front there. Just Scott and David the are using mobile wow. ultrasound equipment to check that. which dairy yeah, cows are pregnant. Yeah. It's uh, a very interesting kit. It looks straight out of Star Trek. Kit. It's basically just an ultrasound. The same thing that we would use in our clinics back in Richmond but this is designed for internal use. and I'm not very much looking forward to where I'm going to have to put it. <laughs> have you got an image? Oh, wow, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Good. so that's the ultrasound scan image I can see right in front that's of me. That's right, yes. OK, All right. let's go. I'm actually feeling surprisingly nervous, way more nervous than I ever expected that I would. I'm an experienced vet, but not experienced when it comes to large animals. So I feel like I'm almost going back to school. Morning, girls. How are you doing? I just hope I'm up to the challenge. All right, so here's the first lot of patients for the day. In you go. Good girl. Waiting patiently in line for 40 cows ready for testing. Hello, ladies. I promise to be gentle. It's really important that every cow on the farm gets pregnant every year. If they produce a calf, then afterwards they can produce milk. It's just like when you're a mum, you only produce breast milk once you've had a baby, and the same applies in cows. I'm just going to uh, scan the first few cows. Yep. And if you just watch to see what I'm doing, and then later on, I'll, you can have a turn, have a go, right? All right. So we're going to use the scanner to see if they're in calf. Just put that, get the probe in it. Most of the time, these girls have a lovely time eating grass in the beautiful Welsh fields. And the farmers, of course, keep very close tabs on them. But every now and again, they do have to get them in and do medical procedures on them. It has to be done, but hopefully it will be as gentle and as kind as possible. Good again. Can mark with chalk. Give the a blue when she's in calf. So you know all pregnant, all the blue cows are, are in calf. I've got a nice blue tail. That's right. Nice right. blue mark on the back. Yeah. OK, next. So you've got to watch them because they will, they will barge on. Yeah. I'm like a cow bouncer. That's right. <laughs> You're doing a great job there. Thank you very much. <laughs> now it's Scott's turn. I know that Scott will find a, a challenge. And just putting his arm into the cow, just a whole, it's a whole foreign environment. And I think he's really got his work cut out today. I, I've scanned and I've checked her. So we'll now give you a go and see what you can find in the cow. OK, so you all ready? Yes. <laughs> is, is the scanner turned on? Uh, it's definitely on, so at least the oh, equipment's right. right. I can't okay, blame good. the equipment. Okay, good. Let's see, let's see okay. how it's It's been such a long time that I've worked with cows, and so I really want to make sure that I don't embarrass myself too much. I'm totally put off by the sound effect she's given me. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Go on, get on with it, and we'll see, how, see, how, see what you find. Okay, I'm going in. So, oh, man. That's an experience I haven't had in 17 years. That is, oh man. I'll be quite happy if Scott can just find the womb initially. Is it in the top left-hand corner of the screen? Would it be there? If he finds a pregnancy, I'll be really pleased. What can I see in here? Okay, I'm trying to find her uterus. Just scan left and right, move the probe over the womb, just left and right. It's absolutely amazing to be able to use an ultrasound like this in the field. Oh, wait a minute. What's that? 
I can tell from Scott's expression how he's getting on. And initially I can see he's really concentrating, he's focusing on what he's doing. And then eventually you can see his eyes light up. Oh, wait a minute, there we go. And you think, whoa, that's, that's, that's the eureka moment. He's seen something wonderful, great, fantastic. Okay, teacher, um, please tell me, I'm, I'm pretty sure this girl's in calf. Yes, yeah, she is in calf. Well done, Scott. Oh, thank <laughs> God. She's in calf, she can go. And then, of course, you have to move on to the next cow, and the next, and the next, and you have to do it all over again. But so far, he's doing great. <laughs> we'll, make a, we'll make a farm better of you yet, Scott. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. <laughs> oh, mate. This is an incredible experience. It's so out of my comfort zone, uh, but also really exciting and, uh, and interesting and different. I've just got poo on my lens. I've had a, a poo accident. <laughs> That's nasty. And now I'm covered in poo. How can I wipe that off? David, I just need a nurse. Yeah, yeah. Do you bring nurses? No, no nurse. You no are, nurse. You are the nurse. You, you're the vet and the nurse. Excuse me. 